Paul George has signed a massive four-year, $212 million maximum contract with the Philadelphia 76ers, and with that, the NBA landscape as we know it is about to change dramatically. The Sixers, with a big three and a guard, Tyrese Maxey, a wing in Paul George, and an MVP level center in Joel Embiid have to be in consideration for the NBA championship next year, and in the coming years as well, because as long as Joel Embiid is able to stay healthy, as long as Paul George is able to keep up his all-star level of play to despite his older age, this type of free agent signing is truly rare. We have an all-star actually moving to a team that might find themselves winning a championship because they were willing to risk it all, and so let's deep dive into what this exactly means for everyone involved. What's up, Mike here, and at the end of the day in the NBA, it is a tough truth. In the words or shirt of Scottie Pippen, it don't mean a thing without the ring. Winning a championship changes everything for how we remember the careers of NBA greats, and both Paul George and Joel Embiid are at the point in their careers where they are getting desperate to win a championship at least. But as they say, sometimes desperate situations can create the best results. And the best part immediately is that on paper and on the court, it makes sense. Tyrese Maxey, Paul George, and Embiid are three guys who won't struggle to figure out how to play with each other. While Paul George is more than capable of creating his own offense off the dribble, he's also someone who doesn't need the ball in his hands to be a capable scorer. As just this last season, PG knocked down over 41% of his threes on almost eight attempts a game while still playing at an all-star level with averages of 22.6 points, 5.2 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game. As he has gotten older, Paul George's usage percentage has gone down while his versatility on the court has gone up. PG actually logged 86% of his minutes at the power forward spot according to basketball reference this past season and 11% of his minutes at center. He is not a player who is going to get in the way or step on the toes of the two established stars already already in Philly. He is a man who is going to complement their strengths and bring them to the next level as we know. The Sixers have been sorely missing a third star since the absolute collapse of Ben Simmons and the mistake to let Jimmy Butler go in favor of Tobias Harris. It was said during that time that the Sixers were openly asking if they could control Jimmy Butler that Jimmy found out and was like, why are you questioning if you can control a grown man that is incredibly offensive, causing Philly to make the ultimate mistake on Ben on Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris as they watch Jimmy Butler walk off and carry the heat to two NBA Finals appearances since his departure while the Sixers in the Joel Embiid era have failed to even make the Eastern Conference Finals. However, now with Paul George, they might finally be looking at the redemption story they have been craving. The biggest question for PG is, of course, can he still play at that all-star level at his current age? George is 34 and he is going to turn 35 next May, which means by the time that his contract is up. He is going to be 38 years old, which means realistically the Sixers' best chance at winning a championship with him is going to come in the next two seasons. Personally, I do think that playing as a third option now, Paul George will be fine, but we also have to ask ourselves, in the playoffs, what version of PG are we going to get? Somehow the nickname Playoff P has become both a compliment at times and a meme at times. In his early years with the Pacers, Paul George almost helped Indiana take down two Miami Heat LeBron big three teams in 2013 and 2014 and then in the 2021 playoffs for the Clippers he helped the team reach their only Western Conference Finals of the PG Kawhi era with averages of 26.9 points 9.6 rebounds and 5.4 assists per game again though Paul George has never been a third option now in Philly he will be asked to do less which means we should see his efficiency rise in last year's playoffs Tyrese Maxey averaged almost 30 points per game at just the age of 23 and Joel Embiid is of course an MVP level talent. Against the Knicks, it was clear. Maxi and Embiid were stars. It was also clear they had absolutely no help. They desperately needed a guy like Paul George as a third option, as Embiid averaged 33 points, 10.8 rebounds, and 5.7 assists per game, but somehow, Maxi and Embiid were just not enough. The Sixers supporting cast completely failed them, with Tobias Harris averaging just 9 points per game, one of the worst outputs we have seen from a man who made almost $40 million. Joel Embiid deserves better. Yes, he has had his own playoff failures, but in the regular season, he has been a monster. From the ages of 26 to 29, Embiid has averaged a combined 31.5 
points, 10.9 rebounds, 4.1 assists, and 1.5 blocks per game. All-time historic stats, as if we were to lower those numbers to 27 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, and 1 blocks per game, we would find only 4 players who averaged those numbers during that age period, and they are all NBA legends. Giannis, Shaq, Kareem, and Embiid. Paul George is going to be a massive upgrade for Philly. He is going to give them the third star they've been desperately missing since Jimmy Butler left. But now, looking at the Clippers, just being blunt here, the Paul George era for the Los Angeles Clippers was a colossal failure. Los Angeles has tried to downplay things by stating, Paul is a tremendous talent and an elite two-way player. We feel fortunate for the five years we spent with him. We traded a lot to pair Paul and Kawhi, and in exchange, we had five seasons of contention. Even though we fell short short of our ultimate objective we appreciate the chances we had with paul but i mean what are they supposed to say sorry fans we kind of messed this one up horribly that's on us of course not but they did mess this up and this trade will go down on lists as one of the worst trades of all time it is that bad the clippers with paul george and Kawhi leonard never reached the nba finals in a time where that was easily in play we saw a chris paul and devin booker led Suns make the finals we watched a luka Doncic carried mavericks team reach the finals these finals Five years were not a situation where the dynasty golden state warriors were gatekeeping any team in the west from reaching the title the clippers could just not keep everyone healthy to make a run in one of the most wide open periods in nba history and at the end of the day they not only did not win a championship but they also gave away a core that would have currently have them in place to win a championship just to begin los angeles traded away shea gilgis alexander who at the age of 25 just finished second in the mvp vote Shea in the 2024 season averaged over 30 points six assists and five rebounds per game no offense to Paul George but he is an all-star level guy not an MVP level guy so already just player for player the Clippers would have taken the loss on that trade but as you probably know Los Angeles also sent the Thunder a treasure trove of picks in this deal seven in total when you include pick swaps and Los Angeles still owes the Thunder a 2025 pick swap and their 2026 first round picks straight up meaning the clippers cannot just blow this up and rebuild they still have to try to contend or something because okc owns their future for the next two seasons now among the seven picks that were given up we already have two extremely notable players drafted one of those picks came in jaime Hawkes jr who for the miami heat looks like an incredible young prospect as he just finished fourth in the rookie of the year voting and even worse another pick came in the form of jalen williams for the thunder who in just his second season Season with the Thunder established himself as a potential young star in this league averaging over 19 points four assists and four rebounds per game next to Shea the Oklahoma City Thunder this season won 57 games and finished first in the Western Conference with two of their three best players being given to them by the Clippers in this Paul George trade a gigantic gigantic yikes and what's even more baffling is the fact that the golden state warriors who seem to be on the verge of losing clay thompson attempted to go all in on paul george themselves it has been reported that golden state offered the clippers a trade that would have included vets and andrew wiggins and chris paul as well as promising young players in moses moody and jonathan kaminga it has also been reported that paul george wanted to go to golden state and that the clippers ended these trade negotiations allowing paul george to walk in free agency in a move that is confusing horrible at the very least take back the trade assets in moses moody and jonathan kaminga right again the clippers have to compete they do not own their 2025 or 2026 first round picks instead los angeles cut any chance at a deal here they took back absolutely nothing in return for paul george then told paul george they didn't want to pay the asking price for him meaning they let him walk for free just strange behavior and summing up this trade in general i get it hindsight is 2020 at the time of the paul george trade everyone was excited to team up Kawhi and pg in los angeles we were supposed to get the battle of la between the lakers and the clippers instead in typical clippers fashion they somehow managed to set the thunder up for a potential championship run while mortgaging their future and then getting nothing back for paul george at all what are they thinking i'm not sure what i am sure of is if the 76ers are healthy next season we will have an incredible time as fans watching them go head to head with the Knicks and the Celtics and with Joel Embiid absolutely determined to win his first NBA championship we really could see Philly holding up that trophy next season in fact because it seems like the Clippers are cursed it wouldn't surprise me if Paul George hit a game-winning shot to win the NBA championship so there we have it guys thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think about this trade
trade down below please subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications if you're not subscribed already and if you're still here i think you're really going to enjoy this video on the worst draft picks in the last 10 years in the nba these picks all cost teams nba championships slash dynasties or i think you like this video that youtube is recommending specifically for you if you're already subscribed thank you so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and